Welcome to the SC2K show interview with Goblin. This is Ron Moore along with Small Tummy. I'm sorry, Bushido Blade Warrior. I keep. I'm so used to calling you Small Tummy Wonderful because I've known you since what 2003, and <laughs> you use that YouTube name. I don't know how long. Yeah, back then when I had a very different name, even on MSN groups. Yeah, and of course we are here with the man of the hour, Goblin Two One Five. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. How how are you guys doing? We're doing pretty good, and it's been a good doing quite all right. It's been a good while since we did an interview. I think the last person was uh maybe Mega Mega Dan or Retro Gaming Star, and that was like last mm -hmm. year during the 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 quarantine, and so yeah during right. the pandemic. Yeah, it's been uh it's been a whole minute, and I just thought you know I would like to do some more interviews, but who would I interview? And then you're one of the top people that came to mind. And, and I appreciate it, man. I'm honored. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Goblin actually discovered me first before I discovered him. Right. And I right. remember... This is true. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, it must have been like early 2019, I think it was. And... Has it been that long already? <laughs> I, I think so, because that's when I started to get... Yeah. That's, when I, that's the year I hit 1K, and I got to know okay. the, the community of people that I'm involved with now as far as streaming mm -hmm. Mega Dan... I think through you, and then I think through you, I somehow discovered all these people, Mega Dan, Nitro, Chaos, right, and right. Uh, Lit Gaming, and whoever else I stumbled upon, I guess because you would rate mm -hmm. them, and then I would go to their stream after the raid, or during right. the raid, and I would get to those, mm -hmm. who, that Brian Trusty and other people. Uh, man, so I think mainly through you is how I discovered all these people that I connected with now. Right, well, that was a that was a big moment. Um I was at that time I was live streaming a lot actually. I was more consistent with the live streaming. And I was very big on uh I don't want to say promoting people. I, I want to say, you know, just giving more exposure cuz you know YouTube really doesn't it doesn't really work with you sometimes. So I, I kind of did my best to, you know, kind of just give that vibe, that energy to other people to show more exposure. And you know, I just noticed it kind of like started catching on, to be honest. I just started seeing a lot of people, you know, were doing it as well. So it was it was it was good. You know, my channel uh, streaming wise was really actually doing well at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, it was good. I met a lot of cool people. And, you know, I met actually um, Smalls or <laughs> what is it? Bushido. I mean, I think we ch you changed the name a couple of times, but Bushido uh, I met from you. And, you know, it's been good, man. You, you, you get to, you, you know, you meet new people, you, you link up, and, you know, you made a lot of good friends, actually. Yeah. I used to call Bushido Danny. I've known him. At, we, right. I've known Danny since 2003, before YouTube was ever thought of. Right, and so, right. Yeah, me, this is absolutely true. Yeah, me and Danny definitely go back. And, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But, Goblin, I know that, uh, you, how, how long, when did you first start your channel? Oof, I would say 2015. Yeah, 2015. I was uh, I wasn't quite streaming yet. No, that was the year before I started streaming. And so, right. um, so what? Why did you start your channel? Like, what what exactly inspired you? Did you just see some people on YouTube do this, and you said, "Man, that looks like fun. I want to join in too." No, actually, my kids, my kids inspired me. Oh. Um, so what happened was, uh, I, I I'm a single father, so I, I had my kids. They were young uh, at that time. I think uh, I would say six years old five five seven both of them and what would happen was you know they would go onto youtube and they you know they'd start checking things out and they were huge huge fans of markiplier youtube to me i did not care about youtube it did not i, I just i didn't spend time on youtube i really knew nothing about youtube uh, my kids are the ones that really introduced me to YouTube, to be honest. But they were huge fans of Markiplier, and I would just watch videos with them. And, you know, I was just like, this dude is just, he's hes playing video games, and he's talking about video games. And I just found it, like, really interesting. Like, it was an interesting concept. I'm like, why the hell am I watching a guy play a video game, you know? Uh, but then you start realizing, you know, depending on the person, you know, they make the content more enjoyable, uh, and, and that's what happened. I was watching Markiplier with the kids, and it was just like a good time that we were spending together. Yeah. So what happened? What happened was at some point I, I did not have a channel. I did not care to have a channel. Um, at some at some point, uh, my kids. Well, my you know one of my sons 
you know, he got a little, he got a little, um, you know, he wanted to see his mother. And we made a decision that he was, he, him, my, my oldest, well, both of my kids decided to, you know, we all decided that they were going to stay with her for a while, uh, which is natural. I always told them it's, it's a natural feeling. There's nothing, you know, you don't have to feel like you're betraying me or anything like that. You know, it's, it's a natural thing. Kids should be with their mother. So um, after they left, uh, the distance, uh, she lived pretty far. So it goes from me raising them since they were babies till you know, eight years old, seven years old. And the, the distance was really far. So, the, you know, I didn't see them as much as I would love to. So one way that I want to communicate with them uh, was through YouTube. Because I know they loved YouTube. They were huge fans of, of Markiplier. So I decided to make my channel. And my channel was actually made for them. For they can, you know, still see me. You know, they can still see me playing video games. Because they always watch me playing video games. So that is where my channel came about. I didn't do YouTube to... It was that was the reason. It was it was really for them, to be honest. And as I started you doing YouTube, I started you know you know making new friends. I started getting into other content. Um, I was my my channel was actually I don't know if you guys know the game League of Legends. Yeah. But the the channel was based on League of Legends. I was a, a singed main, and I was I was doing a lot of videos of singed. And at some point, I think I was like number forty five. In all of North America, using uh, just Singe, you know, uh, with all the other people that use Singed. At one point, I think I was like number forty-five or forty-eight. But my channel was originally uh, League of Legends, to be honest. Okay. And yeah, and and, and and that was fun. And then um, at some point, I have a passion for old games, you know, for old video games. Yeah, it's not rage; it's passion. Yeah. It is passion. passion. Man. <laughs> it is. It is passion. When you're playing a game and you're getting pissed off and you're, you know, you're, 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 <laughs> you're overreacting, man. It's that's part of the deal when you're playing these old games, man, because they're built to to piss you off. In my personal humble humble opinion, yeah. But um, yeah, at some point I got tired of League of Legends, where the community is very toxic. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very toxic community, and I, I went back to. Um, you know what happened, actually? I don't know if you guys noticed, sometimes when I'm streaming, there's a guy named, named Spriven. And, oh, uh, I know, you know Spriven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I met Spriven through uh, YouTube. Um, I was looking for Castlevania content. And a little tip, if you do a lot of Castlevania content, there is a 90% chance that I'm going to subscribe. So um, I ended up subscribing to Spriven. Um I just love Castlevania and, you know, Spriven was like one of those people I enjoyed watching play because he would have his rage moments playing video games. And I was like, you know, I started getting back into the old stuff, into the old video games. And I realized that when I was younger, I was really good in video games, like really, really. I mean, in my opinion, I was much better. I mean, I remember like my reflexes were so much better as a kid and a teen teenager versus now. Right. And and I was playing video games like, oh, my God, I fucking suck. Like, Jesus, this is like really bad. And I remember Spriven made the comments like, well, that's what happens when you play that garbage game League of Legends. <laughs> you lose all your you lose all your reflexes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I started going back to the retro stuff. And man, I just listen. I love retro games. I, I, I absolutely have a passion. Yeah, for retro games. I'm. Yeah, I, I really am, man. Um, but I, stay, I started going back into the uh, the retro video games. Um, I actually started getting... I, I, I decided I wanted to start streaming. And the person that was guiding me uh, to stream was... I don't know if you guys know Slow Beef. He yeah. was actually giving... Yeah, so I, you know, he was... I would, I would go to uh, Slow Beef for, for, um, for help or for guidance or for information... So he he's pretty big on Twitch. I mean, he's, he has a good following on Twitch, and he's uh, he has a pretty good following on, on YouTube as well. Uh, but he's been doing it. He's been doing it for a while too. Um, so you know, he gave me like all this, the, you know, all this information, you know, experience, you know, and you know, I try to take the experiences the the best that I can. And I actually started live streaming when YouTube was. 
I think YouTube started live streaming like in 2006. I mean, I, I don't want to give a date, but I don't remember. I don't think YouTube was I, always had an option of live streaming. No, they. I think they started in 2016. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Because I started in, in 2015. I believe I started streaming sometime in 2016. And that experience was very interesting because what I noticed off the bat, because I used to do video content, you know, you, you played the game, you recorded it, and you uploaded it. There was such a difference versus live streaming. And, and right there, I knew at that moment that the future of Let's Plays uh, is through live streams. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the, it, it just, it, it became, do, doing a video became obsolete of, of gameplay because a live stream, you want to be there. You want to interact. Yeah. It just, uh, the live stream kills the, the, the Let's Play video. And to me, I just found no point. I, I just stopped doing videos, to be honest, because of, of gameplay because it, it made no sense. Yeah, that's pretty much why I stopped doing LPs for the most part. I mean, the last LP I did was Metal Gear Solid on, on this channel, and that was earlier this year. But starting in – I've been streaming since late 2016, and I would still do LPs, but I started to finally stop doing LPs pretty much full-time in 2019 because live streaming is just right. – I mean, I had a lot of fun over the years Let's Playing, a lot of fun on this channel and my channel. But in 2016, early 2017, I just – Man, especially 2018, 2019, when I got more familiar with OBS and I met you mm -hmm, and, and the rest mm -hmm. of the retro gaming community, that's when I really right. fell in love with streaming, and I pretty much that's all I pretty much do now on YouTube. Right, right. Yeah, so that, I'm, I hear you on that. It's yeah. like the, the new Let's Play is streaming. Yeah, yeah, Let's Play videos. They don't. They're you're not. Your channel's not going to grow through. I mean. You have those rare, you know, you do have those people that do grow, but I, I honestly think let's, that Let's Play videos is, is through live streaming right now, um, doing regular video content with video games. I don't, I don't think you, you can be too successful just doing that. Yeah. And so another thing I wanted to ask you was, so how, how exactly did you stumble onto my channel? Did you just find Castlevania content and say, oh, yep, I'm subbing, I'm subbing to this dude? Actually, yes. Um, what happened was I was looking specifically, um, I believe at the moment it was Castlevania. I was going through Castlevania content, uh, but you came up and it was a Contra video, I believe. I want to say it was a Contra video. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started watching it and I'm like, yo, and I, and I don't understand. I, I, for some reason I had the understanding that you quit YouTube. So you, you uh, ever notice, um, I, I always say, you know, you got to come back to YouTube and be like, I never left. <laughs> yeah, I know why you <laughs> said mind. that. I know why you said that because the way my – I didn't have my channel in order. Like uh -huh, it, on uh -huh. the front page, it shows like my oldest streams listed first and or my oldest videos listed first. It would say 10 years ago. And right. so that's <laughs> probably where – and I said I got to change that because people going to think, you know, like I want my newer content to be up front. You know what I mean? I want right, my newer content right, to be a right. friend. I, I figured that. I said, oh, okay, that, that's why. Because I remember you saying that in, in your stream where you rated me one night. And I noticed in your right. stream you said, yeah, yeah let, let's rate this guy Ron Moore. He hasn't done anything in 10 years. Uh, no, no, there's a yeah. guy named Ron Moore that hasn't done anything in 10 years. And then yeah. someone went to the channel yeah. and got back to you in the chat and said, he's live right now. <laughs> like, oh, well, let's go rate him. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I believe I believe that happened. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that dude, was... I've been around since then, nonstop since two thousand seven. <laughs> right, right. I just I, I had the I had the impression that you were, you stopped. So I was like, I watch your content, like, dude, come back, but you never left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, I just noticed that you subscribed, and I clicked on your channel. I said, oh, this looks like interesting content. He does a lot of retro stuff, and then that's what made me yeah. sub to you, sub back to you, and. Um, so yeah, I think the Contra video you saw, I wonder if it's the one where it's a video response to some kid. Do you remember? Um, was it, Did he make a comment of like Contra was a really hard game? Yeah, it was... What was, uh, what was the comment? Yeah, it, well, the, the title of the video was mm -hmm. Response Contra Video Game Review Angry Video Games. It was, of this, right. my, it was back in 2008 when I did that video, and today that's my highest viewed video. The most right. viewed video on my channel was that. And because mm -hmm. at the time, Armate21, who was big and doing a lot of, I don't know if he's still around today or not, but he, he at the time, he was like 
real like on the scene he was huge doing let's plays and stuff and reviews mm -hmm. and he did a response mm -hmm. to that kid it, a lot of people responded right. pretty harshly to him like making fun of him calling him names or death threats or mm -hmm. whatever which i thought was ridiculous but it got my attention and so i did my own response didn't attack him or make fun of him but just like said dude this game is pretty cool and i did like a quick four i think it was a four minute response he, he said right. he said there's no way you can beat the first stage without dying look at this and i showed him well this is how you do it yeah and, yeah that's that's what it was that was the video because i remember someone said like the game is super hard like, yeah it's impossible if i remember correctly because for me it was a while back and i have a really shitty memory yeah but yeah i remember watching your video and you were you were you were explaining uh the game as you went uh on the level yeah and then did, then you clicked on my channel and then you found out i did like simon's quest and other castlevania stuff yeah yeah well that's that was probably the hook right there <laughs> yeah. like i said man if i see castle if i see castlevania there's a very good chance that i'll, I'll subscribe yeah that's how i that's how i ended up subscribing to to gamer thumb too <laughs> oh cool yeah castlevania. yeah i like yeah. i like uh -huh. and gamer thumb is cool yeah he yes. is yes, he is he is yeah and uh don't forget about the thumb brothers i want they should be friends without their thumbs yeah, I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them on, on my stream at the same time. I'm like, whoa! I'm getting, tongue, I'm getting tongue tied here. Yeah, who, who, but who would win in a thumb wrestling match? An ECW ah, thumb wrestling match. Good question. T T C W T C W. No, um, okay, and see, I, I got a couple more questions, and then I'll throw it over to Danny. Um, sure, sure. What are some of your best memories of doing YouTube and Twitch, uh, all the way up to date? Like your just favorite memories, like your glorious moments of completing a no death run or whatever it may be um i really had fun doing uh streaming Mega Man x oh yeah Mega Man x love 2. that game I, yeah let me tell you about that game um that game when i played it as a teenager i wasn't crazy about it um i didn't like the idea how they moved away from Mega Man, and i don't know it, it just turned me off for some weird reason i never gave the game a chance and what happened was uh, Gamerthumb used to, on his live stream, I would see him stream it and, you know, he would just rave about the game. Like, you know what, let me actually get, maybe I should give this game a chance because it actually looks pretty good. I went and then, and then I started doing some research and I found out that one of the composers that does Castlevania music did some of the music for Mega Man X. And I was like, wow, I mean, let me check this out. And I started streaming it, and I'm going to say that was probably, like, my best stream in terms of people coming in. I think I got, I had, like, 25 to 30 people coming in for that stream. It was crazy, to be honest. Nice. And, oh, but the game itself, beautiful. Like, the music, the, the game itself, amazing. I had such fun playing that game. Um, I... I, I think I actually, st I think I streamed it for like four hours, I think, uh, which is long for me. I'm not the type of streamer that stays there for hours. I usually stream maybe max an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, but I think with Mega Man X, I, I like, I stayed, I, I stayed for a while, if I remember correctly. But yeah, that was like one of those streams that I, I absolutely just loved. It was like, a, in terms of being successful, fun, people jump, coming into the stream, I would say that was probably like the best stream that I had that I can remember. Um, there was another stream I did of Eternal Darkness. Uh, this is when my oh, channel yeah. was re really, really new. And I had a good friend of mine, Phoenix Paladin. He, he, was, he used to be a very consistent person on the channel. He would like, he'd show up to everything. And I had him on a couple of... of uh, he's a good guy. I still, I, you know, we still speak on, on you know, Twitter or Instagram. But he, I had him on a stream... And we were doing uh, Eternal Darkness. Yeah. And that's such an underrated, underrated. It is. Amazing game. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was just like, that game was making me paranoid while I was playing it. I'm like, oh my God, this is like crazy. Um, yeah. that's, that's like one of those games that's just, I think it's just so highly underrated. Yeah, I enjoyed I did a first impression review back in 2016 of it. I really enjoyed that game. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, Mega yeah, Man X, yeah. yeah, you said you were playing for hours. It will get you hooked for hours. When I first rented it as a kid, I played it from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. until I finally got to Sigma's yeah, Fortress. I can, I can believe it. I can believe it. It's a great game. It really is. Yeah, and the music just freaking ECW. 
Oh yeah, the music right, really right. pumps you up. Music, yeah, the music is freaking. It's it's out of its world to be honest. Yeah, and what is your favorite game to stream? I assume Castle, a Castlevania game. Honestly, no. Um, I love Castlevania, but we're talking about streaming, oh, yeah. and I, I, I like actually um, Super Mario Brothers Two. I actually like Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels. Uh, oh my I goodness! I like platformers like that. Yeah, I was gonna say Lost Levels. Yeah. I, uh, I think uh, maybe after after this show is uploaded, I probably have already streamed it already. But as of this recording, I'm scheduled to stream Lost Levels from Mario All Stars. On, it's a on, on Friday. Yeah. Mar uh, by, the, by the way, Mario All Stars is like I think one of the best games ever made. Uh, you have so many Mario games in one in one game. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love Mario uh, All Stars, and it's a good it's a good mix remix of the games. You know, like they they improve the graphics, the music, the gameplay is still tight. I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I really love that game to be honest, but. The reason the reason I say I like those games to platform those platformers is because I think it fits my personality when I stream, meaning when I mess up I do my little ah you know these these games I I feel like when I stream it's more of my comfort zone because I just think it fits my personality while I'm streaming it complements me it it complements the stream yeah yeah and. Yeah, so everybody keep me, keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I'm going to be playing a hard game on Friday. I'm probably going to be raging. Passion. Yeah, yeah, Mario All Stars. Yeah, yeah. The, the All Stars. Yeah, Mario All Stars. That's that's it. That is a game. That's like I told you. I don't really stream games for too long. <clears throat> Mario All Stars. I let me tell you, I was streaming that game, The Lost Levels, and I was going to call it. I was pissed off. Like most of my, I have really good clips of that freaking game. I was so pissed off playing that game. Like every, it was like a, a curse word every five minutes, and. I was going to give up. I literally, literally was going to give up. Yeah. And someone in the stream told me, come on, you can do it. Let's do it. Let's finish this. Let's beat the game. Like, ah, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I was like, let's do it. I was like, all right, let's. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, it is a very challenging game, to say the least. I would say, uh, yeah, the Lost Levels is freaking challenging. When I was a kid, I did beat it without warping, but man, it was hard. And in 2016, I did beat it without warping again, but I used save states. <laughs> so in this stream that I'm going to do, I'm not going to use right. save states, cheats, or warps. I'm going to do the best I can. It might take me Good two luck, or three man. streams to to beat it yeah, without yeah. legit, but after the third stream, I might be done because I want to move on to something else. But I'm going to give right, it a shot. Right. It'll be interesting. Some people, I think Mazin and other people are interested in seeing that already because I scheduled it and people are like, oh man, get ready mm -hmm. for the rage. I say, no, get ready for the passion. Yes, exactly. No, it's a challenging game, man. Yeah. For sure. All right, so Danny, you have some questions? for? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Where did you get the name Goblin? How did you come up with that name for YouTube? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> So, all right, do you guys, did you guys ever hear of the game City of Heroes? Mm. I might have heard about that one. So, it was like one of those MM, what do you call them, MMO, MMO games or whatever? M like, MMORPG. RPG, yeah. I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's a, you know, the whole community and you, you build your superhero or your super villain. So, what I did was I created a villain uh, inspired by the Green Goblin. And... I actually named it uh, Green Goblin, and like you cannot choose this name. <laughs> then I went to choose Goblin, and it was taken. I was trying all these things, like you know what? Let me put like two Bs, and then it was like I still couldn't do it. I was like, all right, let me put two Bs, and let me put my birthday, which is you know February fifteenth. So that's the two fifteen. So that was it. And everyone, I, I played that game so so much, and you know. Yeah, everyone called me Goblin215, and ever since then, whenever I played video games, whatever video game I played, I used the name Goblin215. So when I opened the YouTube channel, it was actually original, originally um, PFG, which is my initials. But at some point, I was like, you know, let me, let me put my, since I'm dealing with video games, and Goblin215 was the name I always used 
with video games, I changed the channel's name and I put it Goblin215. Oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so Danny, go ahead. So, Goblin, what was basically... What was the very first game that got you into video games and, uh... Yeah. Um... The, I'm sorry, the phone was ringing. You were asking me the first game that I played? Yeah, the very first retro game. The, the game very, that got you as a gamer. The very... Uh, I think it was called Asteroids for Atari. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I used game. to have that. Yeah, I remember... You know, my father got us an Atari system. And I started... Actually, no. No, no, no. I want to take it back. The first game I played was Spider-Man for, for the Atari system. And I went to my friend's house and I saw his father playing video games. And he was playing Spider-Man. And I was just like, oh, this looks so cool. And every day I would go to their house and we would just play. And then I finally asked my father if we could get us uh, an Atari. And he got us an Atari and I ended up with Asteroids. And that was a game I was really playing and I don't know, ever since the whole Atari experience, I was always into video games. It's something I just knew that I loved right off the bat. Yeah, I had an Atari before I had a Master System, and then I had the NES. So I did. Yeah. I yeah. was so little, though, to really like appreciate the memories of, I don't know how much I played of Atari. Because the Master System was the system that I first had some real video game memories with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that um, we ended up actually, we were trying to get a Sega Master System. And what happened was that we, uh, me and my sister decided we were going to save our lunch money to get the system. So we would save, I think we were getting like $3 every day for lunch, if I remember correctly. So out of the $3, we would take like a dollar. So it would be really like $2 a day that we would save. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up actually getting to, I think it was like $89 or $99. I don't remember how much the system was. Um, and we went to go get the system. Uh, my father took us, and we went to go get the Sega Master System. We went to go get the Sega Master System. It was sold out. Uh -huh. And we were so disappointed. So disappointed. And we were like, you know what? We saw the Nintendo system. And we had to make a decision. We were like, we'll wait for the Sega Master System when it comes back, when they have more in stock. Or we just get the Nintendo. And we were like, you know what? We've worked so hard to save this money. And we're here right now. Let's just get the Nintendo System. Best decision we ever made in terms of the, the, the game system. Because, no boy, I was not... I was not... A, I mean, not that Sega's bad. Sega, it's a good system, but... I enjoyed the Nintendo so much more. I was so happy that that was the choice that we ended up with. Yeah, I remember having to make a hard choice when my dad took me to buy my Super Nintendo. There was a promotion at Target, and it was either get the mm -hmm. SNES with the Mario World Mario Kart bundle or Mario World and F Zero bundle. And Ooh. that was a hard <laughs> you get? choice to make, but I had to go with Mario Kart. And I'm glad I did. I yeah, really had fun yeah. that summer with Mario World and Mario Kart. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, those are both freaking, those are amazing games. Yeah. For sure. All right, got another question, Danny? And uh, what happens to be, like, your second favorite game in the other console that you basically stuck with for most of the 90s? Well, the first game, the Atari situation isn't my favorite games that just got me into video gaming my all-time favorite game would be castlevania uh, the series in general like i love castlevania the first one but i know it's not the it's not the best one i like castlevania 3 more and i like symphony of the night i even like rondo of blood but castlevania is the game out of all the games that is the game i probably played most in my lifetime um second no, it's really hard because there's just Nintendo has so many good games. Uh, between Metroid, Legend of Zelda, you know Mario, uh, there's just so many games. I, it's really hard for me to go. Uh, this is my you know favorite. It really depends on the mood that I'm in because each game kind of like it, it, it satisfied a different need. 
uh, you know, depending on what it is. But I, I know Castlevania is my all-time favorite. I, I like the Final Fantasy series. I love the Metroid series. I love Mario Brothers. So, it, it, you know, F-Zero is the freaking... If you Like, I could tell you my favorite racing game is F-Zero. Like, I fell in love with that game. That To me, that's like my favorite racing... Till, till now, it's my favorite racing game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love F-Zero. I love F-Zero X for 64. Also, oh, yeah. um, I enjoyed Maximum Velocity on Game Boy Advance. I streamed that last year, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, th that's a good series. I didn't play all the games in that series, but it is a good racing series. I, I wish Nintendo would give it more love, to be honest. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, F-Zero X was probably my first runaround with playing F-Zero, and I didn't get that information until I played Super Smash Brothers and didn't really know who Captain Falcon was. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Anything else, Danny? Let me think about that for like maybe five seconds. Okay. And favorite N sixty four game. Um, N sixty four. That is. You want to know something? That's my least favorite Nintendo system. Um, I just think Nintendo really screwed up in terms of that system because and I'm not saying there's there's you know the games aren't good. I just felt like they went in the wrong direction where all the other systems were using CDs, Nintendo still decided to go with cartridges. And yeah. um I, I, I think I, I'm not a huge fan of the Nintendo 64. I, I would say there is a really good game for Nintendo 64 and I'd have to say it was the Smash Brothers. I think to me that was like, yeah, that's a pretty good game for Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, it is. Um, there are some, yeah, the, the 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 WCW games. Oh yeah, that's pretty freaking amazing. Um, the F Zero is pretty freaking amazing. I mean, the system has really good games. I just, I, I was kind of, I wasn't crazy about. Um, I just felt like for them to compete with PlayStation, they they should have went. And also uh, Sega at the time, but yeah, I get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, they should have went uh, CD. I, I think the games were expensive, too, if I remember correctly. They were about $40 a piece. Really? Yeah. I thought it was like, it, was, it wasn't 59 No, I don't recall the games being that expensive, but I remember mm. N64 and PlayStation games all being like $40 at the time. Uh, okay. Yeah, I remember okay. PS1 games being pretty cheap. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, yes. Well, no, sorry. Oh, sorry I was, was going to say, I, I see what you mean by the 64. I loved it, but yeah, I get it. I get where you're coming from. And right. uh, like, yeah. I, I remember my friend Swindoll, he was a huge PS1 fan. And I was a, a huge uh, Nintendo 64 fan. And so uh, there was this magazine, I think it was Next Generation Magazine, where right. it had mario on the cover but mario's face was shattered as if he's looking through a mirror and the mirror was shattered <laughs> and it said is there something wrong with nintendo 64 and of course my friend swindoll said look look at this see how <laughs> i like kind of rubbed it in my face i'm like so right, i don't care and right. like and because to me like the a lot of games the ps1 was so loved for its audio and video capabilities and because right, you can see right. real footage but yeah, again, it, yeah. it also depends on. But the gameplay always wasn't always better on PS One. For example, WCW Thunder and Nitro. Mm -hmm. The only thing appealing about that game really was the audio and visual because they used real wrestling footage, real wrestling audio interest right. music, and the rants that they right. did, the taunts that they did at the the character select screen. That was cool, but. Right. 64 games, a world tour of revenge, no mercy, right. WrestleMania. No, those wrestling games were really good. Yeah, it, they didn't have the audio and, and video quality that PS1 had, of course, but the gameplay was so much better. And so, uh, I'll be totally honest, I like, I like those wrestling games better than the newer ones that are oh, out yeah, now. To yeah, be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh,. <laughs> See what what about PS One? What are what what's, what are some of your favorites? Off the top of my head, my overall favorite PS One game is definitely Metal Gear Solid. But what about you? What are your personal favorites on the PS One? Um, I would say Symphony of the Night, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Seven was PS One, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy Seven, uh, Sakodin. 
I don't know if you guys played Sakodin, but that's freaking oh, amazing. Oh, Sway Coden? Yeah, I know. Oh, but, oof, yeah. oof. I love both part one and two. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good game, man. Good RPG uh, I was, there. Yeah, that's a really, really good game. Um, you guys remember? Think. Oh. Uh, I think, no, I was going to say, you know, a game that stuck out to me was, it was a game that was not popular and no one knew about it. But I picked it up because it just looked so interesting. Was Guilty Gear, and Guilty oh. Gear is still running strong. Yeah, I think yeah. Tony Skittles streams that, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, my friends, uh, Venom Twenty Two, Archangel Zero, they 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 introduced that to me a long time ago when they would bring video games over to my house. We would just have casuals just playing casual fighting mm -hmm. matches, and uh, I think uh, Melty Blood. That's like a is that a, a sequel or something? To uh, Guilty Gear? Mm. Not, not sure. Okay, but I do remember uh, that game. I've seen footage of it. and But yeah, I had a funny story real quick about the PS1. This is back when, like... Mm -hmm. d now, this is a wrestling game that haven't, has not aged well, but I enjoyed it back in the day. WWF Warzone for Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. I wanted that game so bad, and Steve Austin was on the cover, and he was my favorite at the time, and then Kane was going to be in it, and... I said, man, I got this. Is back when I was in high school. Had you know, didn't have a job yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, man, uh, I gotta sell some games. I try to go to pawn shops, but of course, not get nothing out of the Super Nintendo games I had. And my friend Swindle had two PS One games called Crazy Ivan and Loaded. And I, I go, this is back when PS One didn't have the CD jewel cases. They had the big box. They they came in boxes. Oh wow, I f I forgot about that. They came in boxes, and he goes, "Man, right. hey, you might get a lot of money for this because this is throwback. This is before the CD jewel case days. This is mm -hmm. uh the the, right. the box." I go, oh, "Okay," and so I called the pawn shops in my area, and I would go, uh, "How much would you give for Crazy Ivan and Loaded?" And every every store I call was like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> they didn't know, mm -hmm. had no mm -hmm. idea what these games right. were. And I really thought right. I was going to get some big money. It's going to help me get WWF Warzone and put it in reserve at Toys R Us by the time it came out. And th mm -hmm. then, then I would get the game. But no, but Swindoll would hype it up because he really, he thought, he really thought, oh, man, well, these got to be worth something. Crazy Ivan and Loaded. Well, they may be old mm -hmm. and part of the original box set before CD jewel cases were a thing for PS1. But that doesn't mean oh, we were kids. We were young teenagers at the time high school we didn't know but we really thought we uh hit a gold mine or struck gold or something so to speak that would put me over for enough money for war zone but no mm -hmm. uh, looking back on it now crazy ivan and loaded and they're like uh we haven't heard those games sir we, <laughs> and of course i felt stupid years later thinking but thinking back that we were going to actually do something <laughs> and, and make some money with those games right so i guess mm -hmm. i haven't heard of it either because uh, but no. <laughs> it, uh, now I'm going to look it up on YouTube. Just, I'm sure there's gameplay footage. If World of Long Plays hasn't done it, someone else has. And but it was one of those games that came out. I guess it was a launch. I don't know if it's a launch title yeah, or right. just a, a first year title. Because PS One came out '95. Is that correct? Um, I think PS One came out '95, and so that was. I don't well, remember the year. Well, there were some games that actually the, came out in '94 oh, and '95. Okay. So PS One was definitely around, but. It didn't really pick up until, like, the console wars of Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64 really kicked up when I was about five or six. That I remember. Yeah. All right, so any more questions, Danny? Who happens to be your favorite wrestler, Goblin? Oh, Bret Hart. Oh, yeah, Bret Hart's uh, awesome. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, the hello. Oh. hello. Oh, wait. Oh, the... <laughs> hello? Yeah, Hitman. Oh, okay, there he is. Yeah. I mean, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, there's can... other, but uh, uh, Bret Hart, Bret Hart got me into wrestling. Like, I was all about Bret Hart, but I mean, look, I mean, I love Steve Austin. I love The Rock. I love Kane, Undertaker, you know. There was just so many good wrestlers at that time. I don't know what the hell happened to wrestling, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta it's be Kane. To be. That's gotta be Kane. That's gotta be Kane. Exactly, man. Make it dance, oh, good story. That was such a good storyline between Kane and the Undertaker when the yeah. Kane was just coming out. Yeah, really. And yeah. McMahon said, "That's gotta be Kane." And Megadan yeah, met, met Kane. Yeah. 
Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Also, a huge, a huge fan of Razor Ramon. Oh yeah, hey yo, Razor Ramon, hey. Chico. Yeah. <laughs> hey man. Yeah. Say hello <laughs> to the bad guy. You He's want some of Razor Ramon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, six seven. Yeah. He's six foot seven. You know, yeah, he's a big dude, and and you know, honestly, the Razor's Edge—that's gotta be like that's, that's not quite easy a drop. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I still love streaming wrestling games. I uh, just recently mm-hmm, did a show mm-hmm. stream of WrestleMania 2000. Uh, Mega Dan sent me SmackDown versus Raw 2008 in the mail last year. That was cool. Mm. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, have any favorite? Uh, I don't know if you mentioned any favorite wrestling game in particular. Yeah, the night the the WCW uh, from N sixty four was really okay. good. Uh, we we used to we used to play that so much. It was, I thought it was just really done well. Uh, the control scheme, the the gameplay, it was really fun. How to pull off the special moves, loved it. It's yeah, a great now, game. Was that a World Tour or Revenge? You're thinking of? I think it was the first one. I think it was okay. Revenge. Oh, Revenge is the first the, one. That's the second one. Yeah, but World Tour is the first the one. First, it's got to be the first one. Yeah, it's called WCW NWO World Tour. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That mm-hmm. one was fun, but man, Revenge really like was like right. World Tour on steroids. Yeah, I mean, it was an, it was an improvement. Yeah. All right, so I think that's all we have for you. Unless Danny has any more uh, questions. I have about two more questions. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. So. What happens to be the best GameCube game that you uh, deem as your favorite or, yeah? GameCube. Um, man, GameCube is one of those unique systems where, you know, it. I loved the design of the GameCube. I loved how the discs were so small. I like the idea that it was supposed to be like it had like if you remember it had like a handle at the end. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be like yeah, it was like it was meant to be like oh let's go to my friend's house you know I'll bring the GameCube you know that's like that was Nintendo's intentions. Yeah, that was definitely uh, their gimmick. But I, honestly, I cannot think of a game that sticks. I, I other than there was I believe there was a Smash Brothers for GameCube. Super um, yeah, Smash Melee was awesome. Melee. Right, right. The Metroid Prime was cool. But I, I'll, I'll be totally honest. I'm more into the Metroid that's 2D. Um, yeah. Not a, not not crazy about the the Metroid in 3D. Not that it's bad. It's not that it's bad. I just yeah. prefer the the 2D. Disappointed. Uh, there was no Castlevania, if I remember correctly, for the GameCube. Yeah, there was. Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I think it's 64. I don't know about GameCube. Yeah, no, there, no, there wasn't one. For Probably GameCube. at least uh, two Castlevania games for the PS2. There was. No exclusive Castlevania on the GameCube, mm-hmm. sadly. Right. Uh, yeah, there wasn't. Um, but yeah, I said like Eternal Darkness was pretty amazing. I believe there was an F Zero for there was an F Zero for GameCube. Yeah, Cube, GX. I, yeah. I, I, I never that played that one GX though. GX and the arcade version of F Zero GX. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I, I I think GameCube is one of those systems to me that there are some good games, but there isn't there isn't one that other than Smash Brothers and Eternal Darkness, I, I can't say something really uh, sticks out. When I had the GameCube, I think I had the GameCube, and I think it was PS2. PS2 and GameCube were at the same time, correct? Yeah, yeah they were. Same with that. Yeah, I was I was rocking the PS2. Honestly, I was me more too. into the PS2. Yeah, yeah I was much too. more into the PS2. Uh, I had some GameCube games, but you know, I think the PS2 was just a better system, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. considering I, I was basically stuck with a GameCube for most of my teenage life, so I didn't get a PS2 until like I was 17 and 18. Right, right. Um, but I, I would say my favorite system, my favorite all-time system, um, is a is a is a Super Nintendo. Um, I could have a Super Nintendo and I could call it a day. I, I wouldn't need any other system. Like that that system to me, it, I mean, that's what I usually. I mean, that's mo- the the majority of games that I stream. But um, yeah, Super Nintendo I think is my favorite. I yeah. think Super Nintendo is actually one of the best systems ever made. To be honest. Oh yeah, that system is super. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you give me a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo and 
for that Sega Genesis. Just give me Burning Force, and I think we're good. Out of the two. Mm-hmm. Do you know why but... the GameCube systems had that handle? They said it because the system was too hot to handle. <laughs> so you had to grab by the handle. There you no, go with your puns. <laughs> but, uh... Hell yeah, that definitely seems like a sales pitch there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so... And, okay, go ahead. And possibly my last question is, how did... Even though we probably covered this earlier, but thinking back on it now, what was probably your favorite part with the whole Castlevania and interviewing Gamer Thumb? Um, I didn't really interview Gamer Thumb. We had a, a podcast um, yeah. for Castlevania uh, season, the newest, the, the newest season, I think it's season four. The final season, yeah. Right, right. I mean... I, I was just talking to Gamer Thumb. Actually, I mean, this is actually a good question. Um, what happened was I, I, I wanted I want to take the channel in a different direction. Um, because the thing is, if you look at my channel, it's not only retro games. I have other things on the channel. I have things with movies. Um, I have... League of uh, Legends. Well, I, I actually took off the League of Legends. <laughs> right. But... Um, <laughs> I, you know, I have, like, movies, I have, uh, you know, reactions, I have, uh, what was the other one? I started doing a new series where it, it's called Unleash Villains. Where, oh, yeah, um, Villains Unleashed. That's Villains Unleashed, Vega right. Wonders. Right, and, you know, I did one of that, I did one of Striga from, from Castlevania. I, I still am working on more, but the, the thing is, YouTube is is so unique, because... And this is where you have to be careful with uh, support for support. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Because YouTube is built. It's not like Twitch, where Twitch is built like, oh, you can share and everyone, you know, let's see this. Let's raid. With YouTube, the problem with YouTube is, you know, and, and this is not people's fault. Because people are trying, they're generally trying to help. But sometimes when you, you, you drop into someone's video or stream or, you know, you have that person that drops into your stream, they leave a like, and then they leave, but they do it to help you out, but they don't realize that they're doing damage to your channel because... Yeah, because it messes with the uh, whole algorithm and the whole... Right, uh, right. Yeah. So what, you, what YouTube is thinking and is... And the oh, time. Right, what YouTube is thinking is, oh, someone came in and someone left. So it's it's triggered as that it's not good. So all of a yeah. sudden, YouTube is reacting like, well, if, if people are coming in and they're leaving, then what's the point of us promoting it? And, right. and, and, and a lot of people don't have that understanding. You know, they think they're doing good. They think, oh, let me support this person. Let me go in and say hi, hey, hey, and then leave. And, and they don't realize that it's, it's actually damaging your channel. And yeah. that's, that's really dangerous. You know, it's really dangerous if you're trying to grow because... This is stuff that can it can kill the momentum of a video. It can kill the momentum of a live stream. So you know, it's really you know I, I've really been trying to focus on just you know putting some content, um, you know, because like I said, YouTube is really designed to you know for people to be there, and if you're there, then it's saying okay, well, someone's you know investing time. And then it starts promoting, but if it's seeing people come in and then leaving, then it's giving it a negative effect. Um, so you know, I, I wanted to take the channel to a different, you know, a different direction. I wanted, I want, I think everyone wants, everyone wants people to watch their video. You know, everyone wants people to come hang out, you know, have a good time, yeah. um, and, and you want to grow at the same time. And I always try these experiments. You know, like I was doing the whole YouTube shorts, and oh boy, that was. I have no idea what YouTube's thinking with YouTube Shorts, but I yeah, I it's doing... not TikTok. Yeah, and that's the problem. It's not TikTok. So how is it? You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, I did YouTube Shorts. I think for a straight three weeks, and I grew my channel. I must have got like 50, 60 subscribers from YouTube Shorts. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, wow, my channel's really growing. You know, and on my YouTube on the on the Shorts, I would put like. If you want to see my live stream, you know, you know, uh, subscribe. So I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting all these new subscribers. You know, 
they're going to jump in to my live streams. And what I even, what I noticed, it actually had a negative effect on my channel. I noticed actually less people were, were, were coming into my live stream. I noticed that my watch time, the retention on my watch time on my videos were decreasing. So what happened? Dropping. Right. So what happened was I'm getting all these new people in, but they're subscribing to YouTube shorts. So maybe what they're used to is, you know, things that are short. So you go into a video that's long. They're not really there for that. That's what that's what I analyze. I don't know if it's a hundred percent, but that's what I noticed. Things were just, you know, you know, they were just dropping. But on that conversation, I mean, I was talking to Gamer Thumb. I was like, you know, I want to switch things up. I don't just want to stream video games, you know. Um, matter of fact, I want to stream, and I have been doing, I've been streaming video games on Twitch. Because I just feel like Twitch is better designed to stream. Um, and I'm not saying that's, you know, I'm not saying I, I, won't, I won't do it on YouTube. I just feel like it's easier. You know, you just go on Twitch, you hit a button, and you're streaming. If yeah. you want to raid, if you want to raid, there's a button. Uh, right. If if to get ra you get raided and you know it's a very like hey you know and, and you know the thing about Twitch is when people follow you, they follow you like they don't like you don't lose them <laughs> you know like yeah and, exactly. I, and I have, it's like, not stupid uh, how Google slash YouTube will purge your subscriber count. Well, you know, you know, you, you know why they do that, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why they do that. And I actually do agree with it. Usually, I'm going to say they're they're getting rid of subs that people they're, they're people that don't jump jump into your to your content. So, what's the point of having people that are not going to be there? Yeah, you actually, are. you actually, yeah, you actually want like right now. I've been losing subscribers, and I'm I was at I think I had um, 1,549 or 45. I think I'm down to 1,522. I've lost so many subs in the past. Honestly, I started losing subs when I started uh, uh, uploading those those uh, live streams from Twitch, the the chill streams. But yeah. you know what? The way I the way I see it, and it's it's something that Gamer Thumb always tells me too. Is listen, if you're losing subscribers, you're pet, you're you're probably better off because then they weren't really into your your content. So if something someone's really not into your content and they're there. And they're going to your video. You have a five-minute video, and they're going there for a minute. You don't want that. So when you lose a subscriber, I don't think it. I don't take it as a negative. Uh, take it more as as a positive because a subscriber, uh, a subscriber that doesn't really like your content, is actually going to hurt your channel. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So I would rather have. Look, great example. Um, oh my God, uh, Ace. Right? Omega Ace Gaming. Omega Ace. Yes, I'm going to use them as, as an, an amazing example. The guy has about what 500 subscribers, if I remember correctly. Last that I remember, yeah. I has about in his live stream he has from 15 to 20. That's a good ratio. It is, see, yeah. yeah. That's a very good ratio. You know what that what's that telling me is that those people that are subscribed, they're there. You know, they're there for him to be there. You know, so that's what you want. You want you want people that are there. So if you guys ever lose subscribers, don't don't even don't even, you know, ah, I'm losing subscribers. It might be it's a, it's a blessing in disguise. I would rather have 100 subscribers and have 30 people in my live stream. Right, yeah. right. You, you know, yeah. so uh, mhm. Mm I see what you're coming from. I just hate how YouTube could dictate who follows your channels and whatnot. But at the same time, I don't want fake followers either, so I kind of see right. both sides. Very true. And right, the thing right. with me is I don't have a good ratio. I don't. I never really care too much about the numbers anyway. Like, it's whatever. I am. Right. I do have a goal of getting monetized, not to get rich, not to pay bills, because I realize I might not get much. It, you got to have at least $100 before you cash out. Right. And right. that, that accumulates, what, once a month? You, you get a paycheck once a yeah. month if it's at least a hundred dollars yeah. so uh, what and that's all fine alpha alpha nerd gave me some constructive criticism the other day he said uh bro these chill streams you're doing with cpu fighting or the cpu only is not a good look for right. your channel bro because by and everything he said was right but i told that's him you're right but the reason why i still do that is i actually enjoy it and right. it actually statistically it helps the watch time hours slowly but surely go up and up and up and i'm at 3200 over 3200 right now every week it's been right. going up and up and up and right. i would like to hit monetization to enable the memberships because that would be cool to have the interaction with with my members 
on the channel right. that, that join and they get the membership badges and I can give them mm -hmm. a few perks every month and right. that's why I'm doing it and I realize I don't have a good ratio I have like 1400 subscribers and t if I'm lucky 10 viewers in the stream 10 right. and well I mean I, I don't want to go too crazy about the ratio but that that's just something like well, I, I do see like Omega has really good in his channel is where he does have a lot of people uh, yeah. coming in a, a low a low count that's a good sign yeah um, for me I you know my content is scattered it's not only live streaming I do have videos and what I usually see what I think is that there are people that I have like two audiences one that goes for the videos and one and those that come for the live streams and that's like one of the challenges that I have for my channel is that I kind of like do a little of both. And I think if your channel specifically is dedicated to a certain aspect, a, a subject, I, I think the growth will increase. I think it's kind of like one of the things that kind of like is challenging for me because I'm kinda, like, sometimes I feel like my channel has like a little bit too much going on. And, and that's what I want to work on. That was what I was originally speaking to um, Gamer Thumb, that I wanted to kind of like, narrow things down on my channel i want to start doing podcasts um, yeah. i did that podcast with with gamer thumb and i want to continue but uh you know uh work has 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 picked up and you know obviously the work pays the bills yeah so you know yeah. that that's that's coming first but you know i would say that anyone that does live streaming i, I would think that the most important thing if you're live streaming is consistency because i've noticed that once you lose the consistency it's really hard to get people back yeah for sure and the past yeah. few months i've been consistent in the the streams i do i, try, I do yes, my I, I do my best to schedule the, the well the only streams i schedule are the streams where i'm actually there <laughs> where i'm actually right. there playing the yeah. game either behind the camera or behind the mic or both and i'm actually playing the chill streams i don't right. unless it's a special one like capcom versus snk2 a while back requested by big boss uh, most of the time, I don't, I don't ever schedule or share those out because I know most people don't care about those. They, when they come to a stream, they want to see you or hear you and see yeah. you play in the game. Yeah, exactly. That's what the stream is that's all the about. Point of a live stream. Yeah, and yeah. me. Mm -hmm. and that's why some people have come to my streams in the past. Like, how come you're not playing the game? Or wait, are you even there? Like, I'm yeah. not responding. I'll be asleep while people are talking in the stream, and I wake up to check the messages after yeah. that. And but but pe some people like Danny and and Jimmy of, of games, movies, and comics are us or and big, big boss, big boss, and you goblin lurk or zombie will lurk in my streams because you know I'm trying to get the watch time hours up. Ace has helped me out as well. I yeah, try, I try yeah, to do that course. to other people as well, like like Fear the Pack. I'll leave his stream running on Twitch sometimes when I go to sleep, and yeah, help with the, of with, with the watch time and stuff to, on Twitch. And yeah, so I, I understand right. that the chill streams are not the most exciting. I, I might stream games that no one cares about or whatever, but man, I, I come to know. Especially if they're like 20, 30 years old, but who really cares? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I like streaming, I love doing the chill streams and they have statistically helped me out as far as the watch time hours going up higher and higher because I can't be there right. all, all week streaming as much as I would like to. I don't, as far as actually streaming for real, I only can do that once, maybe right. twice a week, and or maybe three times right. uh, if I'm right. lucky. And but the chill streams have right. really, really helped, and it's really helped me get toward monetization for the main purpose of. Of course, I'd love to receive super chats, but I have Streamlabs for that, you know, um, for mm -hmm, donations. Mm -hmm. But the membership perks, and I mean, yeah, I would like to really have the interactivity, and I'm, I'm within reach well, of that goal you know you know you know what it is ron you have a goal uh, it, yeah. you know the the perks but it's clear to me that you have a goal and you want to hit the watch time and i think that's good you know it's it's always good to have goals uh something to to you know you want to achieve and at this moment you want to get the watch time you want to get that under your belt and i think you're pretty close and i like i totally understand the point of this chill streams i i jump on them we speak for a few uh i do leave them open because I do understand that, you know, you're trying to get those hours. I mean, I think yeah. everyone has the understanding of that. Um, you know, and the same thing. I know people jump on my streams for a few and, hey, listen, we're all adults. We, 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 we have lives, you know. It's, 
it's 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 impossible for someone to just sit on the computer for hours you know there when there's responsibilities so i mean i always try to to go and i chill for a bit and i interact and you know i stay as long as i could and if i can't be on the computer i will leave the i will leave it on and this is why i would say if you're a streamer it's so important that you're you're that you're very um interactive that you talk a lot you talk about what's going on because I, the, whenever I stream, I'm picturing myself as a radio station, you know, like I'm picturing myself as someone not watching TV, uh, someone listening, because to me, you always want to be to the point where you're entertaining enough where someone doesn't really have to look at the TV, they can listen. Because, I mean, listen, a lot of times people have things they're doing. Sometimes I'm cleaning and I'm listening to a stream. Yeah, I want to. I, I, I want to hear what's going on. I like to hear the conversations, but that's not going to work for someone that's just playing a video game, right? Yeah, not saying anything. You see what I'm saying? Not saying anything. I, I can't listen to that. This it's just you know for that I just put a video of a video game. You know, like uh, you know the, the the usually when I go on a stream, you know I like interacting. I'm watching. You know, there's really good people. I love watching Gamer Thumb. I love watching Slow Beef. Uh, T Belly, uh, I, I listen to you guys as well. I, I watch you guys. You guys are very interactive. Yeah. You know, Brian, Brian Trusty, you know, he's, he's a very underrated streamer as well. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Brian yeah. has such a great setup. He's so underrated. Um, you know, it's just, it hurts. It hurts to see sometimes. Like, you see, you see people with such potential. Like, they should, to me, they should be doing so much better. But let me tell you, man, YouTube, this is a grind. And live streaming, you have to have, like I'm going to say, you really need a set. You have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. You can't stream great for three months and then disappear because it's really hard to get some of those people back. You have your, your you know, the people that are loyal that are there for you, but some people are there, they already got used to the schedule. And when the schedule's gone, they'll, they'll just go to another another area, another another live streamer. For sure. Yeah, consistency but, is key. And Yeah, for uh, live streaming, yes. And I'm dedicated to YouTube right now. If for some reason, right. uh, the reason why I don't restream is because uh, something happened with YouTube Studio, the changes last year. Yeah. Um, for example, yeah. let's yeah. say I'm restreaming on YouTube and Twitch. If the power yeah. goes out or the internet goes out, all you, when it comes back on, all you got to do is stream again on OBS, hit start stream. And on Twitch, right. everything, all the settings are still there on Twitch. But on YouTube, yeah. you yeah. got to rename yeah. the title, re-add the tags and description. You, and this, this is another reason why I started streaming on Twitch is because, listen, man, I have, I, I have just have, I have so much going on that sometimes I just want to come home and I want to stream. I want to hit a button. Right. And I know it sounds, I know it sounds like, Oh, well you got to put in the title. It gets, sometimes you just really want to sit down and stream. You know, the whole point of, you know, you got to put the title in a thumbnail, this, this and that. Uh, you know, I just, sometimes I really just want to hit a button and I just want to relax. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And so I that's mean, why I don't really I, I was, I, sorry, I was going to say, that's why I don't restream anymore, and I'm dedicated to YouTube now, getting yeah. the watch time hours, but if for some reason right. YouTube were to deny, deny my application once I am eligible, that's when I'm going to start uh, streaming. I'll still stream on YouTube, but as far as restreaming, that's when I'll start streaming on Twitch, Live, and Trovo, and I just keep Twitch around right now to support others, well, and, yeah. and I, I still... You know, it's so... It, Sorry, oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say I still go to Small Streamers Connect and accumulate those those points where you can get auto we can get hosted. Right, right then, right. so I save those up just in case one day I do stream on Twitch again. Then it could be a good chance I mm -hmm. get hosted by them and then all these people because I have 131 mm -hmm. followers on Twitch, and so I'm already with mm -hmm. the exception of the average, uh, not the watch time. What's it called? Average number of viewers in your chat yeah. and whatever you else you got to meet. Three viewers. I'm close to affiliation I, I don't even stream on there and people still follow my twitch channel and i tell people okay guys but i don't well, really that, stream on here right now I was, that that's the thing I, and you put a you, you see what you just said right there is that you don't even really go on twitch and you have some type of growth uh that, that's what happened to me i went i've had my twitch for years years and i had it to watch slow beef because see that's where he, he that's where he streams that's the that's the reason why i had twitch it wasn't to stream on twitch it was to to watch slow beef and 
I started streaming on Twitch just to to practice. I mean, not practice, just to try it out. I was doing both, restreaming on both YouTube and Twitch. And I was, you know, the crazy thing, I was trying so hard on YouTube. And then one day, I got accepted to be affiliate on Twitch. I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't even <laughs> trying. Right. And I was like, okay. okay. And so I accepted it. And I was streaming on Twitch for a while. And then I started streaming on YouTube. And I was really blowing up on YouTube for a good two or three months. Uh, like, the, like, I went from, like... Geez, I had like 300 or 400 subscribers and I went to like 900 in like three or four months. I don't even remember, to be honest. And, but, but now, now the present. I went recently, I think like in April, I went to Twitch and I started looking my, at my analytics and I found out that I had like $90 waiting in Twitch. And you can't cash it out because you have to hit a threshold of $100. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, where the hell did I even generate $90 if I, if I barely on Twitch? And I was just like, dude, there's some potential here to make some money. Because I've been on YouTube for years. And the, 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 the income I've made, is, and I'm very grateful, is from people you know, uh, donating. But from YouTube itself, YouTube hasn't given me a dime. Mm -hmm. And here, here I am. I have barely tried on Twitch. And I, I, I have money and I've actually made money since I've been on Twitch. Like, I've, uh, you know, I've increased in followers. I got some revenue. Now, uh, when I said revenue, this is nothing huge. This isn't like, oh, my God, uh, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire. And it's nothing like that. But it, it is it is a good feeling when you're being rewarded for doing something, even yeah. if it's a little thing. And sometimes YouTube, you don't, I, I don't get that, you know, and my watch times went to crap when I stopped using YouTube. I, I was close. I think I had like 3,800 or 3,700. And recently I checked, dude, I'm like, pff, like maybe 500. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to grind this one out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the grind is real on YouTube. and yeah, But YouTube yeah, yeah, is my yeah. personal favorite place to be because that's where my audience is. And No, I love YouTube. Yeah, me too. And But I'm just saying, like, if they were to, like, if for some reason I get rejected, from the uh, the the uh, application once once I reach the, the monetization yeah, AdSense yeah, if program. I get rejected or whatever or demonetized later on after that for whatever reason, and I'm just like, all right, that's cool. I'll still stick with YouTube, but I'm gonna right. do. I'll still do chill streams here and there, but maybe on both platforms. And then as far as restreaming, Twitch, DLive, and Trovo, because I still have accounts on DLive and Trovo. Right. Um, and so, but right now. I'm strictly laser focused on YouTube, trying to be as consistent as I can with these with these streams and chill streams. And I mean, I'm mean, within reach. It'd be cool if I can get the monetization for the memberships. That that'd be really cool to do. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm super centric and laser focused on uh, YouTube as well because my right. audience is there too. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard for me because I. I I have I've been growing an audience in Twitch, and I also kind of have an audience. I, mean, I have you know people on YouTube as well, and it, it kind of sucks because I wish I could restream like both, do both at the same time. But Twitch has that thing that once you're affiliate, like you can't do that. I'm just like, damn. That, well, I think that really what, sucks. what what can you like do it just not at the same time? Is that what you mean? Like, uh, um, you can still no, stream. No, I want to. Re no, no, I wanted to restream at the same time like I used to. But okay. You once you once you're affiliate. But I think as a but, partner, you know, one, as a partner, you yeah, can't you stream can. anywhere at all, right? Anywhere else at all. As oh, a partner. I didn't know that. As, as a partner, partner I, I think as a partner, you can't stream anywhere else at all. But as an affiliate, you can, but not at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that part. That's that's good mm -hmm. to know. <laughs> that's really good to know because that's yeah. going to be a problem. Yeah. I was plan. I was planning to do the podcast on YouTube. I mean, come on. I'm acting like I'm going to hit partner anytime. <laughs> yeah, me either. Yeah, right. But, but 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 you know what? That is something to know. I didn't know that. Um, but you know, one thing about YouTube, I, I do. You know, like I said, I met a lot of good people from YouTube. Uh, a lot of good friends. Um, you know, and you know, when the book came out, I had a lot of people. I was really surprised at the amount of people that support supported me from YouTube. I had a lot of people from YouTube that actually, uh, you know, they purchased the book. Or got the Kindle, you know, the ebook, and, and you know what, man? Like, 
like most of my sales from the book came from YouTube and from Facebook, you know, my family and friends and from YouTube and some from Instagram. And I, it's so funny because I was doing so much promotion, promoting on Instagram with the book that I thought I would do most of my sales from Instagram, but it ended up being like the least. And, and I mean, I appreciate man. A lot of people back me up on the book and I appreciate the support because it was, it was something that I was kind of nervous about when I, when it was released because I swear to God, I was like, you know, what if I sell like one or two? I mean, from my understanding, whenever you, you know, my research at the first, you know, when you're first starting out doing this thing, it's not easy because you know, you have to grow an audience. And I was kind of scared of, you know, it not being picked up or, you know, having really, really low numbers. And, uh, and I'm not saying the numbers are, you know, crazy, but it's a lot more than I expected. And, you know, I really appreciate everyone that, you know, that participated in, in, in getting the book. Yeah, that's cool. Also, the book turned out to be really good. Oh, oh, uh, how far did you get in? Uh, I think I'm on, like, chapter six or eight. Nice, nice. Well, I'm looking forward to chapter Three. ECW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I actually started this, uh, another book already. I was working on it yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... So that will do it for this interview. Goblin, thank you very much for letting us interview today. We appreciate it. Amen. Yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys. You guys, uh, you know, it was, it was a pleasure meeting you guys, uh, becoming friends, and uh, I, I enjoy watching your, 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 your live streams and, you know, continue doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, uh, so, thanks. And, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, just, yeah, guys, if you're not familiar with Goblin, check him out on YouTube and Twitch. And you also have a Twitter and Instagram. Is that what you said? I do. Yes, I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. This is correct. I should know it. You have a Twitter. I follow you on there. I don't know why I asked that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, I, I, well, I'm, I'm not too crazy. I'm not too. Medias. Yeah, I'm not too crazy about Twitter that much. That's why I have the app on my phone. I just use it when I'm on my PC. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really crazy about. I mean, Twitter's cool. I mean, I I, I communicate with some people from from Twitter, but honestly, yeah. uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, Twitter is just a giant black hole of toxic people, and it's not a fun place. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I haven't had that that much problems really with Twitter, but yeah, I can see what goes on on there. But uh, me too. But all right, so we are out of here for Goblin and, and Danny Bushido Blade Warrior. I'm Ron Moore. Hey. God bless. Take care. Take it easy. Follow guys. the Black Cat. <laughs>